How's things over where you are, uh, Nigel? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's good. Um, down? I'm sorry. Things settling down with with COVID, or or is it still up in the no, air? Sorry, right, guys. Just, sorry, just to interrupt. Just to let you know, we have we have gone live now, so uh, okay. I think we might have to pause and catch up for a bit. But um, okay. Uh, good evening to everyone watching. Um, happy to be joined again by um, Danny Macklin, CEO, Nigel Travis, Chairman, Martin Ling, Director of Football, and, and Kenny Jacket, First Team Manager. Um, we're very, um, taking a lot of your questions in throughout the week um, until we're putting those to everyone. Um, but to, to get things started, we'll be handing over to, to Nigel to um, introduce tonight. Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone, um, and welcome to our last catch up before crowds return and, and the pre season. Um, today is, thank goodness, going to be. Re mainly focused on football, but I wanted to kick off with a few general points. Uh, unfortunately, COVID is still with us. Um, and Kenny was just asking me as we came on air what it's like over here. And the answer I was going to give him is that I had three live board meetings coming up in the next two weeks, and they've all suddenly gone remote because people are worried about the extent of the Delta variant. Uh, I think both in the UK and here, there's a lot of concern about what's happening among the unvaccinated people. Um, I think it's worth saying right now, the, in the last half an hour, the EFL came out in the UK and encouraged people to get vaccinated. It's the same issue here. Companies are facing it. Um, we've got to do everything we can to maintain a healthy environment. Um, I want to start off with a compliment on that front and talk about Danny and his team, and it is a team effort for everything they're doing to handle a very complicated situation uh, with the EFL and local requirements. In the note I got from the EFL in the last half hour, they actually say at this point the EFL has not been provided with any guidance from the government relating to the application of the NHS COVID pass at sporting venues, though we do understand that draft guidance is currently being produced by uh, the government. So they're working together. And I think it's important, you know, that we don't come up with uh, the requirements. It's, it's, it's the government. Then we go down to the local authority with whom we have an excellent relationship. Uh, if you get confused sometimes, that's because we're confused. Uh, but we're doing everything we can. Um, the, the one thing I would ask everyone to really think about and to consider uh, doing is to wear a mask. I understand they're a pain, um, but we're 100% focused on your safety. And it's not only you, but other people, fellow Leighton Orient fans, we want to make sure you're as safe as, as, as possible. The second thing, which I know some people are going to be disappointed in this, unfortunately this season there'll be no UK streaming of games. That decision was made by the EFL. Um, basically, uh, they've decided that we can only stream midweek games, bank holiday games. Um, there is obviously a chance that some games may be a Sunday or a Friday, so there may be some more opportunities there. And there's also the international breaks. But the majority of games will not be streamed. Um, I know fans will be disappointed by that. We've already received a pretty strong reaction. But again, it's not us. We've been uh, pushing the point very strongly. We had a very successful and lucrative streaming operation last year. Uh, and we will continue to push. But obviously, there are agreements with the broadcasters that we or we, the EFL, has to work with. Um, international streaming, I know that's not much good for people in the UK, will continue as before. And, and we're going to have actually some meetings this week to talk about how we can encourage even more people to follow the O's from around the world. And we're excited about what we can do over here in the US and in the Middle East. The next thing was following the aborted European Super League. Now, I should point out to everyone that three clubs are still claiming they're involved in it, which is Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus. 
Um, the government set up a fan-based commission headed by Tracy Crouch to look at the future of football and particularly the impact on the pyramid. Just to remind you, the pyramid is actually 13 levels. We're in level four, uh, so we're a long way up. Um, so far, we're very encouraged by her interim proposals. Uh, and I'm asking Danny and Luke to put her interim, and I stress interim, proposals on the website so that our fans can read it. Uh, there is a group that's lobbying strongly, and we were one of the first clubs to join the Fair Game Vision. This is to drive much needed change in the game. And Danny and I have been working with this organization, and we're actually encouraging more teams to join. Um, their, their goals are wide ranging, uh, but the main one is to get financial stability to the football pyramid by having a fairer share of football revenues generated. And that's particularly. Uh, media uh, revenue. My fourth point is always I want to thank our fans for the non-stop support during a difficult two years. Uh, we had obviously the passing of Justin Edinburgh firstly and then dealing with COVID. I'm truly excited about the new season and I think it's important that you hear from me the many reasons for my excitement. No particular order. The support from our sponsors, our commercial partners, has been extraordinary, and I ask you as fans to support the products and services. Clearly, one of our sponsors, Harry Kane, uh, is in the news today, but I'd like to also thank Harry for his generosity in supporting Leighton Orient for the second year. Uh, we're doing very nicely on season ticket sales, and I see we have a question on that, which Danny will answer, And we under but we also understand that some people are nervous about coming to the ground. That's another reason we've been pushing streaming, but so far we're unsuccessful. Uh, again, we've got some questions on this, but as far as I'm concerned, the Academy is as exciting as it has been in recent years. I think you're going to see several products of the Academy performing in the first team at some stage this season. We had a meeting a month or two ago to introduce you to our new investors. I think that meeting went very nicely. Uh, and it's great to have them on board. And why is it good? Well, yeah, we've, <laughs> we've got some money, but also they've got different ideas and they challenge us to make Late Orient even more sustainable. And I would add, even more ambitious for the future. Finally, there's been a lot of changes in our playing staff and our coaching staff, but none was more important than the appointment of Kenny that you're going to hear from today. We're truly excited by his management approach his experience and many promotions. And we firmly believe that we have chosen the best possible manager to move us forward in the years to come. So with that, Luke, I'm going to pass back to you. And I know you've got some really uh, good questions for us to answer. Yeah, thank you, Nigel. Um, as I said, we had loads of questions in um, ahead of tonight. So obviously they're not all going to get answered, but I try to take a fair representation across all the categories. So. Um, to get started, I think this is one for probably Martin and Kenny. Um, someone's asked, is in eight players in so far, including the loan, um, is that our business done or are we still looking to add one or two more? Go on, Mark. Yeah, uh, no, the business is not done, uh, but I feel that there's one or two more that may be added, but uh, after conversations with, with Kenny, uh, we have decided that we will look to, towards the back end of August rather than the current time. So we feel we're comfortable at the moment. Uh, I think the, the reason behind that would be a position might develop where we feel we need another body. So we, we're actively uh, got a finger on the pulse in terms of a, a, another one or two extra people coming to join the club. So that's how I see it. Ken, do you want to yeah, sorry, out? similar, um, similar. Really, I, I, I wouldn't anticipate anybody coming in before we, before we kick off on Saturday. I'm, I'm confident that from last Saturday we have players back, and and then after that, players soon to be coming back as well. So, so you know, it's, it's as we stand at the moment, um, you know, quite a healthy squad coming through pre-season and looking forward to the start of the year. 
Um, I do think at the moment we should start with the squad that we have and then assess it when, when you know, our standards and our level starts. Thanks, Kenny. Um, to follow that with the, with the second question, and I guess kind of follows on from what you were saying there, but um, the question is, uh, given how long it took Bolton's squad to gel last season, are you at all worried that it will take time for the squad to gel? I, I, I'm not, no. I mean, I'm, I, I don't think so. I think Bolton went through many, many challenges on and off the pitch. And as you say, pulled it together very well. I don't think those challenges are quite there for Orient. And, and although there's been... Um, a high number of players turned over and obviously, you know, myself and Joe Gallen uh, uh, coming in, um, you know, my assessment in the pre-season games and in the training is that we have gelled uh, pretty well. And, and you know, as I said, the off-field the off field, um, impression that I have is, 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 is one of, 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 of stability, which, you know, took, took Bolton a little while to achieve. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Um... Uh, if we'll stick with you for now, Kenny, if that's OK. Um, and a couple of the questions have been around um, the front line of Orient. And the um, question here, I'll, I'll read it out as it's, as it's written, saying, um, looking back over the last four seasons in League Two, only one team has been promoted where their top goal scorer scored less than 10 goals, which was last year with, with Cheltenham and Alfie May. Is there a concern at all that there's a lack of goals in our forward line? I think the goals have got to be distributed. I mean, there's, there's you can look at di different stats, different ways and there's there's plenty of sides who have somebody who gets 20 25 and finish halfway in the league as well but um i, I do want to distribute the goals uh, um uh, definitely I, I do i do feel as well that there's there's a number of players that you know have really got to step up to the plate and we're going to work hard with them uh, but I, I like players on the way up and and i do like players that have a lot to prove and and, and sometimes then that that means taking players that you know, their, their record up to now is, isn't necessarily fantastic, if you like. But I, I feel we have a really good hunger and desire, which is a big thing. I want to distribute the goals. Scoring enough goals is a big thing. And, and then, you know, when you are looking at someone like Paul Smith dropping down to League Two, then, you know, I would have very high hope, hopes for him. For example, if you like, um, uh, right across the front line, there's there's um, uh, two 23-year-old centre-forwards that are just coming in in Drinnen and then obviously Harry Smith at 26. And, and you know, that they can improve as well. And the reason that, um, uh, that that we've taken them is that I do think they're on the upward curve and, and can improve that. Uh, um, uh, going into the attacking midfield positions, uh, Dan Kemp got five. You know, can he get more than that? Uh, um, uh, centre-back positions. You know, can Beckles score a high number, mainly from set pieces? Happe, Darren Prattley can. Those, you know, all, all, all of those targets have got to be set rather than it all going on to one person. And, and yes, it is something that we consider definitely. We know we definitely need, but you know, I have every confidence in the squad that, you know, if we create the chances, uh, we, we can score the goals. And, and for the forwards that, that, are, that are coming in, they are on the young side. We understand that, but I, I do think they're young and improving and on an upward curve. And, and that, that's part of uh, the management plan. Kenny, um, probably one more directed towards you, Martin. Um, there's a question asking, how much input have our analysis team had on player recruitment this summer? And have they ruled out any potential targets? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's been a change in terms of uh, we've actually got a recruitment analyst in now. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, we use them tools alongside the tools that we've got through experience, obviously, with, with Kenny, uh, with myself, with Joe Gallen. Yeah. So, yeah, it is, we've got, we're, it's a more in-depth uh, procedure. I think a lot of the procedure would, from the analysis side of things, help us to, to take people off the list uh, from a list that we've already put together, uh, and, and then then rubber stamp it with with uh, what the stats show. Important that the the I think it's important that the old ways are not forgot, uh, but I also think it's important that the new ways need to be brought into the equation. So yeah, me and myself, Kenny, Joe, uh, the free analyst, Joe. Uh, and Ch Charlie are more performance related and Mike is the recruitment. Yeah, we've used them tools. Uh, it's a very good way uh, of 
of trying to not make mistakes. You know, what you would always be judged on as a, a manager, a director of football is your signings. Uh, and you got to get more right than you get wrong. I think by having the analyst team within the within the uh, equation uh, could lessen that chance of making it making that wrong decision. So you're never going to get them all right, but the be on end or uh, the process is a, is more in depth. But as you say, there's a lot of experience with Kenny, with myself, with Joe uh, that goes alongside them and. Uh, Analytics, but they have, yeah, they've, 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 they've told us that they feel that people that we've maybe had on our long list uh, wouldn't be the answer. Uh, so then we, so we, we then move on to to the players that that that, that, that maintain themselves on the list. So yeah, the process is good. You know, it, it, it's different, it's newer, but uh, it's a process that we're enjoying doing. Thank you, Martin. Um, and sticking with that kind of squad building theme and another one for you Kenny is has the quality of the younger players surprised you and has this forced you to reassess your squad building plans I think in reference this is to the likes of Shadow G Jaden Sweeney and, and Dan and Krumer has also been involved Yeah I, I do think though that you know youth policy is important and if there's players there that you do see I do think you should encourage them you, you get enthusiasm out of those and and just 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 a a, a blend of let's say experienced youth uh, uh, produces a, a winning atmosphere. I think um, I, I've got confidence in the area that we're in that that we can produce our own players as well. But but there are individuals, as you say, and 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 some others behind the ones that you've said that that have impressed me in pre season. That's their job uh, to be under the nose of the new manager and to do well. And 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 if they do that, they will they will get opportunities. Um, you know, it's something that I am looking to encourage stroke, you know, push the youth department to, 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 to keep uh, both recruiting and producing uh, uh, young, young players that are, that are good enough. Uh, Orient traditionally does that anyway. And, and that's, you know, been a strength for the club. And for myself coming in, you know, it's something that I, I want to enhance and capitalise on, you know, because I do, I do believe it can help us to be successful. Thank you, Kenny. Um, moving on to the kind of off the field stuff, I guess, and a question that's aimed at you, Nigel, and that's one asking whether or not you're happy with the number of season tickets sold today. So, Luke, I'm going to come back in. I've got an unstable connection. Oh, no worries. Well, maybe we can start with that one, Danny, if you want to give us a, a bit of background on how many we've sold so far and, and how that compares to previous seasons. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for everyone uh, dialing in. Uh, we're 3,820 odd uh, at the time of speaking. Uh, we set a, an internal target of 3,850. So we're, we're obviously going to eclipse that. And I think we're going to eclipse the, the revised 4,000 target that we've had now for a couple of months. That support is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal to be able to match that to when we uh, pointed Kenny to when key players were either brought in or renewed. You can see like when Vigaru came in, when Prattley was signed, you can almost plot that on the map, uh, which makes quite interesting reading. But yeah, the support's been fantastic. Uh, we had 4,300 in this season before uh, COVID struck us. And yeah, it'd be amazing to get back to that. Uh, that might be a stretch too far, but that'll be the ambition that we'll, we'll aim for once we've gone past uh, the 4,000 mark. Danny? Um, I think while we wait for Nigel to join again, um, if we go back to uh, Kenny. Um, and Kenny, another one of the questions was, um, <clears throat> what, I wanted to know what is your knowledge of our players before we joined the club? Yeah, I'd, I'd um, watched a lot of League Two and the back end of last season or second half at least last season. But in recent seasons, I've been in League One uh, and before that, the championship. What I do find as well is, is there's a lot of championship football just generally on on, on TV. So um, um, coming, let's say, after Christmas uh, of this year, my knowledge of League One and, and, and the championship was very good. And I, I needed to brush brush up on League Two. And, and I, I did that and was doing that, you know, before the Orient situation came up. And, and I'd seen Orient, you know, a, a number of times. Uh, um, so, you know, coming into the job, I did feel that, you know, I had a good take on the whole division, a, re a recent 
a, a recent take on the division as well as the um, uh, particularly as the promotion race was building up towards the end of the season, and thus you know information and knowledge of of Orient, I, I did think was good on on then you know putting in for the job and 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 then ultimately uh, being appointed. You know I could take that sort of stages further if you like and. And, 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 you know, watch it and re-watch it. So coming in, I had a really good knowledge of, uh, of, of Orient. Uh, some of the, the players, let's say, just below the surface, um, it wasn't always easy to, um, to see. But, you know, I have enough contacts to uh, ask people, you know, who's the better ones in this age group, who's the better ones in that age group. So I do, I do think then, you know, coming into this new season and, and you know, pr prior to pre-season, my actual knowledge of the players here was, you know, was very good, and, and I, I was happy with, you know, my overall knowledge of, of of League Two, and and you know where our players and the players that are coming into it stand in that, and 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 ultimately, you know, where the new group uh, um, uh, can do well and 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 hold their own, and and hopefully go on to be successful. Yeah, and I'd probably just follow this up with another question about um, obviously it's only a few months into the role, but. Um, someone had asked, how does, how does Orient stack up across kind of all the outlooks compared to the other clubs you manage in the same in the same kind of time frame? Yeah, obviously different. Um, you know, so every situation is different. There's there's different strengths of every club, and and quite often, you know, clubs are at different stages of their own journey or development. And and Orient comes across. You know, we we're talking about earlier about um, you know the, the 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 recruitment analysts and. And the guys already working, you know, they're, 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 they're good people. And, and when we talk, you know, we talk about uh, uh, using technology, using technology in every industry, but you, you use it in, in, in football now. Um, uh, you, using it in recruitment to filter is, is what you use. That's, that's the main reason that you do it. And, and so, you know, the, the filter always has to be better and better and better. Technology in, in, in recruitment anyway, yes, 100%. Technology in fitness, you know, in physical fitness, they're, they're two big areas that you'd be a fool not to use as technology improves. And, and so, so, you know, those areas are very well covered by Orient, which is good as a manager, because, you know, if, if you want to get the best out of a manager, you have to, you have to put a, a support structure around him that lets him concentrate on the football. And, and you know, for, for that, I think there's been a, a lot of th thought, a lot of effort uh, gone into that. There, are, there obviously will be bigger clubs around, but, you know, maximising what we have, making sure we, we know the area that we're in, we're in and the strengths that, that the, the club have, capitalising on those, and then, you know, putting a support structure around that, you know, for the new manager coming in, gives him the best chance to be successful. You know, all, all of those boxes are ticked and there's thought gone into all of those areas, which is good. Thank you, Kenny. Um, Nigel, are you back with us now? I am. <laughs> Sorry it's about not, that. I've no learned worries. that this is the difference between fibre and cable. <laughs> um, the question for you then um, is, obviously, the new, the new investors on board is great news um, and the new women set up looks promising. However, we seem to lack women on the board and the football side of the club in senior roles. Is that likely to change in the near future? OK, so... This is a subject that's very close to my heart. Uh, and just to sum it up, it's diversity. And I think we had another question about diversity as well. Um, so we're a club that's very focused on diversity. And I think it's easy for fans to say, well, he would say that, would he? wouldn't he, in, in terms of uh, the answer to the question. But if I go outside of what I do uh, at Lake Orient, right now I'm involved in recruiting three diversity ball positions for some other companies I'm involved in over here. Um, and it's been an exciting and really interesting process. Um, we have a board, what we call a way day, even though we're doing it remote later this week. That is one of the subjects on the uh, agenda that we're going to talk about. Uh, I think we've got pretty good diversity in the playing squad. Uh, I think we need to obviously think about how we can integrate women uh, into the club more. Uh, and I think Danny's got some ideas on that. Uh, LBGQ uh, is obviously another subject that comes up regularly. And I want to remind everyone that we finished last season with both a, a manager and an assistant manager who were minorities. So we fully embrace diversity. And for any avoidance of doubt, uh, anyone who utilises any 
racial abuse, as we've already done, will be banned for life from Lake Norrient. We, can't, we won't stand for it. We're very supportive of how the players believe uh, diversity should be seen. Uh, and I think it's increasingly becoming, and appropriately, the way of the world. So Lake Norrient's going to improve from where we are now. And I appreciate the questions. Thank you, Nigel. Um, to lead on um, from that one and, and talking about staffing, um, one for you, Martin. Um, the question is, uh, do we have our backroom team in place now? Um, and has Matt uh, Harold's role changed at all? And, and is Steve Foster still at the club's head scout? Yeah, uh, yeah, we are fully set at first team level now in terms of staff. Uh, Matt Harold's role hasn't changed. The only difference was Matt we couldn't really do his role last year as development coach uh, because there wasn't really games that we could have for the development team. It was good to see Matt and Brian Sarr take the team over at Dulwich Amley, Dulwich Amley last Tuesday. Uh, so, no, Matt's role's not changed. Steve Foster is still with the club. Uh, Steve is now working between 40, the ages of 14 to 23. And we've got Jamie Johnson who's come in uh, above, not above Steve, but to do the, the first team stuff. But Steve's got an important role to play. Uh, I just feel that we, that we, as a club, we felt that the conversion rate from the age of 14 into into first, into the scholarship, into then into pros uh, could be better. Uh, so we wanted someone to look after that area. Steve will always also be the loan manager. So if we need to get players out, into non-league football, uh, where Steve's got an, an extensive knowledge of, he will then, you know, help us to place the players at the right level they need to be. So Steve and, and Jamie will work together. Uh, it's it's a it, it's not anything uh, apart from an area which I think is important to the football club that Steve's been put into that role, and he's very very excited by the new role. So we've 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 added an, another body, or we've added two bodies really, with the recruitment analyst as well and Jamie Johnson coming in. So we are very well, uh, we're very well staffed. We feel that we're at where we want to be. There's a couple of positions that have become available uh, in the academy uh, that we need to, to still fill. Uh, we've been interviewing. Uh, but yeah, I think we're, we've been, we're in a really strong position. The, the staff is uh, exactly where we want it at this moment in time. And, and it's, it's over for, the, for, for them staff members to work yeah, alongside Kenny in, in the ways that Kenny sees fit for them to work. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. Uh, you briefly mentioned the academy there, obviously recent appointment of uh, uh, Lee, Lee Johnson as our um, new academy manager. Do you want to give a bit of a background on him and, and why he was the right choice? Yes, Lee's background, he, his last club that he worked at was at, was at Barnet. Uh, he's been he's worked abroad in both Rwanda and India at first team level, uh, he interviewed absolutely excellently for, for the role. Uh, he's come in and, you know, he's going to, like anybody, they're going to have their, their, their ways and they, the few changes. And we, you know, when we appoint, appoint people, we encourage them to, you know, we don't, we don't baby feed them. We let them do, you know, do what they feel that's right. We've uh, at, at the same time, making sure that we, continue with what's been, a, a, as Kenny explained earlier, a very successful youth structure. You know, it's, it's, it's been in place. I think that the youth, struck, the youth actually is in the best place it's been since I've been back. I think that the, the group of scholars, the first year and second year scholars are the strongest two groups we've had for a while. And, and some of that will come from, if you can put your mind back, that we played two years in the National League, and 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 we wasn't sure whether we was going to have an academy or not. So we sold a lot of the, the sort of the boys from each age group. So it took a little bit of time to get that back where it where it should be. But Lee Lee's come in, as I say, he's come, he's come in to do to do the role. Uh, he's very well versed on how it how it's done. And, and what I liked about Lee, you know, he talked about what he could bring to the, you know, to the party. You're always going to do that in an interview, but he also he also was very clear that that what we had was very strong as well. So he will, you know, he, he will assess it and have a little, probably a little tinker with 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 certain bits because you wouldn't be an academy manager if you didn't. But uh, as I said, it's very exciting. We we're, the products 
we do get the products. You know, the products are there. They, you know, later on, I've always have managed to get them. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm particularly excited by the first, first and second year scholars. There's, there's some good players within the group. And as I say, the strongest position we've been in since we've been back in, uh, uh, you know, since we've been back here since 17. So uh, exciting times. Thank you, Martin. A um, question for you, Danny, was about the potential of hosting a double header at the ground. Um, with your mind, the likes of the women's team or the academy to, to play a game straight after the first team. Um, is that something the club's given much thought to? Yeah, very much so. Uh, we obviously await the women's team fixtures to be set, and our plan is to do at least one, certainly as a trial, uh, to do that as a double header. So we perhaps leave an hour's gap to allow the, the women's team to, to warm up and the men to cool down. And yeah, watch this space over the next few weeks and hopefully we can set those in stone. Thank you very much. Um, switching back to yourself, Kenny, um, a question that came in just recently from YouTube was, given your experience and length of time in management, what continues to motivate you to, to continue? And what was it that convinced you to drop down to League Two? Yeah, I, I, I do enjoy the job. The, the the part of the job that I like is I, I consider myself, I, you know, you know, I know I'm a manager, but I do consider myself a coach, and and I I, I love to coach a team, and and being the head coach, if you like, is is something that you know I really do enjoy and want to continue to do. How how you can shape a team both through uh, coaching analysis and then ultimately recruitment. Is is you know something I do enjoy, find a big challenge, and you know yeah, want to you know continue to do as 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 long as as long as possible. Uh, um, dropping down to League Two, I thought that um, uh, Leighton Orient was a club that had, a, had a, an upward curve coming, and I did think I could help that. And and you know success is is everything if you if you do want to stay in you know football management. So. Um, uh, it's about pick, picking the right club, about picking the right project that you do think at, at that particular time can suit you as well and, and can can bring out the best of you. And so, so, you know, that's how I came to the the decision. But but ultimately, yes, you know, what drives me on is is you know shaping a team, forming a team, having a control over the team, and then you know going into a, a league season uh, as we are this week is, is is a big motivation for me. And again, you know, something I'm really looking forward to. Thank you, Kenny. Um, another one for you, Martin. This is a question kind of on the state of play in League Two at the moment. Um, someone has asked, uh, with the amount of free agents available this summer, have you been surprised by the lack of movement and signings across League Two? It looks like some players are holding out to see what they can get before making a final decision. Uh, I, mean, I was just speaking to Kenny this morning about the fact that I think there's an awful lot of players without clubs, uh, that's for sure. I think some of this, and, and I explained this to, I think it was Nigel, is that clubs will leave it as late as possible because players that were under contract last year will get July's pay packet through the club that they are or they was at. So that's saving you a month's money. And that doesn't say, say, sound a lot, but if you've got eight or nine players that you haven't got to pay July's money to, that gives you a bit more uh, manoeuvrability within, within the market. Uh, I think that clubs are being very cautious because of COVID. Uh, the fact that, you know, every every sign we're seeing at the moment is saying that we're going to have full support uh, and we're going to have supporters back into the ground. Uh, but I think that the, the, the fact that what happened over the last 18 months where them decisions changed quickly and, and we and all of a sudden we had fans for three or four games and then we didn't have them again. I think it's making people wary. I don't think there's players sitting out there waiting, if I'm honest with you, because, you know, if any any player that's doing that is, is a fault uh, because there isn't, the, you know, there isn't the money that there was previously, I don't believe. I don't believe that there's, there's going to be the same uh, amount of money within the league that there has been previously. Uh, I say some of that would be clubs and clubs being scared of the consequences of COVID. Uh, clubs probably looking to save a little bit, as I explained before, because of the July money. You know, you only you only got to look at the black people that got released from our football club uh, last year. I think there's only one of them that's found an arm in terms of in the league. And that's Lee Angle. 
Uh, there's a few uh, that have found a, a, a home in National League, you know, people like Sam, uh, Josh Carlson, uh, and, and, and others. But it's, it's a difficult. So if you look at the players we release, they're struck, you know, they're, 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 they're not gone into League Two apart from one player, and other clubs will be the same. But I think that there'll be some clubs that work off of uh, lesser squads as well, uh, you know, if they're so to stretch their money or the, the quality they want to fetch in, they'll have to go with less players at the bottom end of their squad. Uh, so there's a, there's a multitude of reasons, but uh, I believe we're in a strong position, uh, as, as we explained. Uh, we've also explained that, you know, the possibility of, of fetching a couple more in towards the back end of August, uh, which is which is great. Uh, we, 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 I think we're one of the clubs that's in, in, in a very good state of play compared to with with some others that you that you see thank you martin um moving on from that uh danny there's a question uh directed your way which is uh a bit of a specific one but as i understand that, that is now card only at the kiosk in the shop so i guess if you'd like to a onto that one and maybe b give a um overview on, on some of the changes at the stadium compared to maybe the last time uh we had fans in regularly yeah, a good question. So we have moved to cash, as we announced that a few weeks ago. I appreciate that not everyone's been back to Brower Group Stadium yet. So like many sport venues, like many entertainment venues, we want to basically make the process and a lot smoother. Obviously, you only have sort of a half hour before a game, 15 minutes at half time to serve you know, a huge amount of people. And as our attendances continue to rise, we've had to look at how we can serve people more efficiently. Furthermore, we spent twenty-five, thirty thousand pounds on cash collections in the first uh, in the last full season, uh, which is not a small amount of money. Let alone all the time it costs to dispatch that, uh, to count it, and to have have those collections made. So that and the hygiene that's involved uh, is clearly a lot cleaner just to hand over and do a contactless payment, which is up to forty-five pounds and soon to be up to a hundred pounds. So. We think, it, it, yeah, there will be a very small number of people that perhaps don't have a bank card, uh, but so far we've only counted two fans uh, that, that have gone into that that camp, so to speak. So it is a bit of a change, but hopefully it's one that all, all fans will understand why we've made that. Yeah, and obviously earlier in the week, earlier last week, I should say, um, we issued the supporter code of conduct. Um, is there any other kind of elements on that that you'd kind of want to draw people's attention to ahead of coming back? Yeah, we want to provide people with as much reassurance as we possibly can. As Nigel, I think, said at the top of it, we encourage everyone where possible to wear masks, certainly when they're sort of moving in between uh, the concession areas and between the concourse, A, for their own safety and B, for the safety of their fellow spectators. So we just ask people to do that. And you know, probably more important than anything, if anyone's displaying any symptoms, you know, simply stay away. Uh, and you know, basically use common sense and hopefully we can get back to doing what we love of, of cheering on goals come three o'clock on a Saturday and we, you know, that, that, those days are, are very, very close now. Thank you. Um, probably one to look to conclude on. So, Nigel, if you're, if you're with us. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to get off mute and video. <laughs> um one of the questions was asked about whether or not we are operating within the salary cap that in the end was not adopted by the EFL um, as question one. And then I guess to kind of elaborate on that, um, what kind of where are we in, in the wider conversation of salary caps and, and, and the football league? OK, so <clears throat> let's, let's start by saying the goal is to get sustainability. And that's why I referred to earlier on with Tracy Crouch with a bunch of proposals, which I won't bore everyone with today. We'll put it on the website. And I stress their interim proposals, they're not the final proposals. But everyone wants to see football in a sustainable fashion, and that probably needs some kind of redistribution. But football has done a poor job of cutting its cloth to, to uh, ensure that it becomes profitable. Uh, Last year, we did have a salary cap that was agreed at League Two, League One. The championship did not, and clubs operated it. But I'm not going to point any fingers, but in the process, the PFA wasn't consulted. Uh, that went to arbitration, and after uh, a, a pretty detailed legal uh, 
dispute that was uh, resolved against the EFL and in favour of the PFA. So the salary cap went away. But I think we have to recognise we need control mechanisms. At the moment, we're operating under what I still view as a complicated process called SCMP. Uh, Danny is actually working on a working party with the EFL for next season. But I think we need to see stronger control. Um, and I think COVID has really highlighted that. And, and I think one of the things I'm truly encouraged about is not only did the England team have a lot of products from lower down the pyramid, but I, I, I truly think that people are beginning to realise how important the pyramid is uh, in terms of development. You can also see, you know, great football. I mean, the number of supporters I've met who've moved to support in Leighton Orient from, say, Arsenal or West Ham or someone else is fantastic. And I, I truly think we will see that number go up even further this year when people have a chance to come back to the stadium. But I think it's a complicated issue. We're going to keep talking about it. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we have to stay focused on Leighton Orient. And I can assure all the fans who ever doubt that we do this, we're very keen to support Kenny and Martin with what they're doing. We're not going to be stupid. We're not going to you know, overspend ridiculously. But we've worked together and had, just for the record, zero disputes about money over what we're going to spend this preseason. But we do want to be successful. We're ambitious. And as I said at the start, I think some of our new investors have made, made us think we can go further than we originally thought as the original board. Um, I will close by saying I'm very optimistic about the season, but I, I was reminded that one bookmaker actually said we had the toughest first 10 games based on where they think teams are going to uh, finish. And I think many people think Salford are favourites to go up. So we start there. So you don't get much more difficult than that. But I feel good. I feel good about the way the EFL is run. Many people don't say that, but I do. Uh, and I think in two or three years, we'll look back and say, wow, you know, investing in Leighton Orient was great. The football's great. And, and truly, clubs are becoming sustainable, which is what we all want. Because as I say in every one of these meetings, my goal wasn't to make money on Leighton Orient. My goal was that Leighton Orient will be around in 100 years' time. Thank you, Nigel. Um, I think that brings us to, to a nice natural conclusion. Um, was there anything that anyone on the, on the panel tonight wanted to, to end with or are we happy to you know, call it a day? Yeah, can I just say, just in terms of, you know, from from the process of, of fetching Kenny in and he talked about, oh, someone asked the question of Kenny's knowledge of League Two and, and, and of our club. Uh, people that don't know the process... That I that, or the club go through is that we have an initial meeting of which is a coffee with probably seven or eight people. But uh, Kenny was my first meeting. Uh, as I was driving to the meeting, uh, I don't want to embarrass Kenny, but I just thought that probably we haven't got, I'm not sure we got a chance of, of, of getting Kenny. Uh, but when I went for the meeting, his actual knowledge on League Two to start with, but on our own players was was phenomenal. I remember coming out of the meeting and speaking to Nigel and saying it was it was quite amazing uh, of the information that, that Kenny was feeding back to me. Uh, obviously, we still had to go through a process and, uh, you know, we had to show Kenny our, our good side. And, and I think that, that Kenny mentioned the word growth and I think that's, that's a good point because, you know, we've had four years of getting from uh, coming in from the previous debacle that was previous to us and, and then building it to where we are. But we do feel along with Kenny that we've got another growth spurt in us. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very exciting times. And it's, it, it, it's just amazing that, you know, sometimes Kenny told me something about our players that, that, that I didn't quite notice myself, which was, which was interesting. The fact that I've watched them for four years or sometimes all that season. So yeah, same as Nigel, I'm very excited. Uh, I feel we're in a great position. Uh, there's been a lot of change, uh, but I think all the changes have been for the better. And uh, bring on Saturday, as they say, we've you know we've done a lot of pre-season games, and I have my little giggle with people that I've had enough of them by now <laughs> because you you can watch so many, but you want the real 
thing. So I'm really looking forward to Salford on Saturday. And just for myself, Luke, yeah, just, you know, on behalf of, of, of the, the, the players, the staff, and I'm sure the board, you know, thank you all for your, for your support. And, and, you know, we'll be doing everything we can uh, inside the club to, to, to offer, a, you know, a product that's uh, both appealing and, and most importantly successful. So thank you very much for your support. Thanks, Kenny. Um, I guess just to end it then, a little note to say that um, tickets for Salford away went on, on general sale today. Um, so they're available from the ticket office this week. Um, I believe we'll have news on, on the QPR League Cup fixture as well. Um, hoping for news on that tomorrow. Um, and then beyond that, our, our first couple of home fixtures are, are on sale now. So um, all the information is on our website. Um, so head there if you wanted to read a bit more. Um, but for now, thanks, thanks.